This episode of ETC is brought to you by Preacher on AMC. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Weekly Weird News. Feels very weird to do that alone. Uh, since Elliot is on vacation and I'm up here alone on a random rooftop in New York City where no one can judge me for the stories that I'm about to read, we're going to stick to a few main news items on this week's episode and uh, do away with the headlines for just one week, just, I, just, just one week before I'm lovingly reunited with Elliot back in Los Angeles next week. And uh, I, we're all hoping to find him with his beard grown back. Obviously, that would be the best case scenario. Uh, but for whatever reason, this week's episode is heavy on animals and humans not mixing well together. And uh, we're going to get right into it with a story of complete badassery before getting into the crazier, more depressing stuff. Okay, this one's pretty depressing too. Fuck. All right, meet Ray McComer, a 72-year-old man who just wanted to go out for a nice day of crabbing with his buddy. There's just one problem. His location. Australia. Darwin, Australia to be exact. And everyone knows you don't fuck around with animals in Australia. He didn't really mean to, though, and was just in the wrong place. Australia. At the wrong time. Anytime you're in Australia. While they were pulling crab traps up with their tiny 10-foot-long boat, it was tipped over by a saltwater crocodile, which threw McComer and his friend overboard. The two struggled to climb back on board, but uh, it flipped again. Finally, McComer was able to climb back on top of the capsized boat and slowly paddle it into some mangroves, where he then proceeded to get stuck in waist-deep mud and had to face off against numerous saltwater crocodiles, which can grow up to 23 feet in length and weigh up to 4,000 fucking pounds. Holy shit! Oh my god. This is terrifying. So imagine a few of these gigantic prehistoric beasts teaming up on you in their territory. What would you use to protect yourself? Well, basically whatever the fuck you can get your hands on. And that's just what McComer did. He threw spanners... Australian for wrenches, and even the spark plugs from the boat's engine at the crocodiles to keep them away from him until some locals heard his cries for help. Uh, he was flown to a local hospital where he was treated and released with an epic story to tell about literally fighting killer crocs. What a badass. This dude is a badass. But, but Ricky, what happened to his friend? You never mentioned him after the boat capsized. Moving on, here's a story that'll lighten up the mood a little bit. Those crazy Brits are back at it again in the news, and this time it's not for a shortage of sweets or a ridiculously named street. I mean, the city is a ridiculous name, so... All right, whatever. This time, the citizens of Hull, a city whose name is actually Kingston-upon-Hull, which is located in the East Riding of Yorkshire, whatever that means, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, you're going to give me shit for it either way, they swear that they've seen a goddamn werewolf and you better believe they're trying to hunt this thing down. Now, much like in the United States and our Bigfoot, apparently there is some sort of mythological creature that has been haunting the area of Yorkshire and England for many years, and it goes by the name Old Stinker. And it's described by locals as a hairy beast with red eyes and bad breath. How the hell any of these people who have spotted him over the years have gotten close enough to smell his breath and live to tell the tale is anyone's guess. But apparently these mythical creatures do tend to stink. I grew up in Florida where there was always tales of the skunk ape walking around the swamps. He was like a, a Bigfoot kind of thing. So these recent sightings have added up to more than just one or two crazy people babbling on about this thing. One woman told the local newspaper that it stood upright one moment and then next it was down on all fours running like a dog. She continued, it vaulted 30 feet over to the other side and vanished up the embankment. Some claimed that they'd seen the beast eating a German shepherd pretty specific for someone witnessing a mythological creature. Uh, either way, the residents of Hull are planning to hunt this thing down during the next full moon so they can prove to the world that they aren't just a bunch of lunatics. But I'm not holding my breath for them. I mean, unless Old Stinker is real, then I would hold it because he smells pretty rank, but whatever. At least these morons aren't actually hurting anything except for their town's reputation and maybe a hairy human that they mistake for a werewolf when they're on their hunt. Well, these next few people actually destroyed the lives of some poor, innocent animals, all because they were completely ignorant. <sighs> Let's start out with these dumb bros whose drunken antics resulted in them killing an endangered species. Holy shit. Now, back at the end of April, security cameras caught these three guys who were drunk, rolling up to Devil's Hole in Death Valley National Park, and then they got out of their ATVs, shot guns through the locked fence, and at a security camera and other equipment, threw beer cans everywhere, urinated on the protected site, and then they figured why not go skinny dipping in the water where this endangered species called the pupfish lives, 
Uh, also, they left their nasty ass boxer shorts behind, so evidence all over the place. Uh, anyways, the site even got underwater footage of the dude stepping all over the habitat and potentially crushing the fish thanks to a camera that monitors the water of Devil's Hole. Whether it was his foot or his disgusting body, somehow one of them killed the fish, a fish of which only 115 still exist on Earth. Well, 114 now anyway. Uh, the good news is that they caught these three guys, and great news, they're now facing felony charges for conspiracy to commit a crime, killing of an endangered species, destruction of property, trespassing, and destruction of a habitat. Good. But if you thought that was it for depressing animal stories, oh god, I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. But at least this next one is a little less sinister, despite the fact that it ends with the same result. Guys, I am so sorry. Uh, but while, a while on a trip to Yellowstone National Park, someone whose heart was a little bigger than their brain thought they saw an adorable little bison that might have been just a little too cold. So what did they do? They snatched it up, threw it in their SUV, and hightailed it to the closest ranger station where they demanded to speak to a ranger and claimed that they had rescued the bison and thought that it was freezing and dying. So that's a good thing, right? Wrong! Don't fuck with animals, even if you think you're helping. That's like the number one rule at any national park. Don't touch the animals. Don't feed them, don't touch them, don't try to rescue them. Let nature take its course. The park rangers attempted to return the bison to its herd, but apparently the rest of its family caught the scent of human interaction and the entire herd rejected the calf and the National Park Service was forced to put it down. Absolute savage. The Park Service did explain why they would have to do such a thing, so before you go freaking out on them, this is what they said. In order to ship the calf out of the park, it would have had to go through months of quarantine to be monitored for brucellosis, whatever that is. No approved quarantine facilities exist at this time, and we don't have the capacity to care for a calf that's too young to forage on its own. Nor is it the mission of the National Park Service to rescue animals. Our goal is to maintain the ecological processes of Yellowstone. Even though humans were involved in this case, it is not uncommon for bison, especially young mothers, to lose or abandon their calves. Those animals typically die of starvation or predation. Nature is a cruel beast, but so is man. We're all fucked, okay? Especially this next guy who, everyone, I am so sorry. I, I don't know how Elliot is able to find balance with these weird stories. Everything I saw this week involved morons dealing with animals. I am so sorry. Anyways, this next story is about a rancher in North Dakota who spotted an animal that hadn't been seen in that state since the 1800s. A wolverine, bub. So instead of reporting this majestic animal to the authorities or calling the Daily Mail and claiming that he'd seen a werewolf, he did what any true red-blooded American ranching man would do in this situation. He shot it dead. Uh, apparently the wolverine had been, quote, harassing his livestock, so that's why he had to put it down. I mean, I guess that's fair. That kind of shit does happen to people like that. It's just sad that he probably did it not knowing that this was an animal that was so rare in his part of the country that people hadn't seen it for 150 years. But I'm just gonna cut this short because all this stuff is too depressing. Uh, here's an eggplant that actually looks like a giant cock. There you go. This cocky eggplant is now up for auction, but you have to hurry because it ends this Saturday. The one of you has to pick this up, please. That would be amazing. Now, if we can just find a gigantic peach that looks like a human butt, we can actually start that live action version of Elliot's emoji movie pitch that uh, he wants to do called Eggplant and Peach. Also, here's another one. Uh, this lady is claiming that her infant crapped out the Holy Cross. Take that Jesus face on a piece of toast. Attached to the disturbing photo of baby shit was the following message from the mom who said this. Sometimes in our busy, crazy, hectic lives, we forgot how wonderful our God is. Today, I feel as though he sent me a sign saying everything will be okay. I'm right here by your side. This sign came in the oddest form, my baby's poop. I went to change his diaper and he pooped across. It might not be the prettiest sign, but he put it where he knew I'd see it, in my baby's diaper. Ugh, whatever, I'm done. I, I, I'm heading out to go watch the Ninja Turtles movie right now. It, it's just the right amount of over-the-top eye bleach that I need to cleanse my palate from this show. Uh, try to have a good week, everyone. We'll be back next week with Elliot, his beard, and headlines. Check out our other content over here, new episode of Tech Tuesday. Uh, there's some other stuff over there, including a podcast. Check all that out, and I will see you guys next time. Hopefully, well, no, not next time is going to be still out here, but next week, we'll be back in L.A.